For any size gift before Ash Wednesday, February 14th, we'll send you my 2024 Lenten devotional booklet. Make a secure online donation at thewordendures.org or make your check payable to The Word Endures and send it to Box 616, Collinsville, Illinois, 62234. And we'll send you my new devotional book for Lent, By Your Holy Cross. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is brought to you in part by the Lutheran Heritage Foundation. LHF is a recognized service organization of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, dedicated to translating and publishing the books of our Lutheran faith into more than 100 languages for our Christian brothers and sisters around the world. Learn how you can take part in their work at lhfmissions.org. Welcome to The Word of the Lord Endures Forever with Pastor Will Whedon. As Boaz comes out from the village and heads into the fields, he doesn't crack the whip and yell at his reapers. No, instead this pious man speaks the salutation to them. The Lord be with you. Yes, exactly the same as when in the liturgy the pastor turns to the people before the collect, the prayer of the day, and in the preface of the communion liturgy. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a daily verse-by-verse Bible study with the church, past and present. Pastor Whedon is leading us in a study of the book of Ruth. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Greetings, people loved by God. In our last study, Naomi and Ruth had finally arrived back at Naomi's ancestral home, Bethlehem. Their arrival, recall, caused quite a stir among the women folk. No doubt, Naomi was changed by the ten years she lived away. She looked older and grayer now, but still the women folk recognized her and asked each other, Is this Naomi? They would no doubt be wondering what became of her husband and her children. When she hears her name being whispered, Naomi tells the women, Do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. That is, instead of pleasant or lovely, she should be called bitter, because the hand of the Lord being against her had embittered her soul. She explains, I went away full, and the Lord has brought me back empty. She left with a pious and loving husband and two young boys. She comes back bereft of them all. Remember, too, that was not a denigration of her beloved daughter-in-law, but a recognition of their shared grief. Naomi had no doubt who had brought the calamity upon her. She knew that the Lord God was omnipotent and ruled over all circumstances. But she doesn't understand at all why this great sorrow has befallen her. The women arrived at Bethlehem right at the start of the barley harvest. A reading from Ruth, the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. Now Naomi had a relative of her husband's, a worthy man of the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth, the Moabite, said to Naomi, Let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain after him in whose sight I shall find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. So she set out and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the clan of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem. And he said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered, The Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his young man who was in charge of the reapers, Whose young woman is this? And the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered, She is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. She said, Please let me glean and gather among the sheaves after the reapers. So she came, and she has continued from early morning until now, except for a short rest. Ruth 2, verses 1 through 7. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, without your help, our labor is useless, and without your light, our search is in vain. Invigorate our study of your holy word, that by due diligence and right discernment, we may establish ourselves and others in your holy faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Ready to dig into today's passage? Let's get to it. Verse 1. Now Naomi had a relative of her husband's, a worthy man of the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. As we'll hear later in the book, Boaz is a close relative of Elimelech, but not the closest. There was one other who is never named, who stood in a closer relation. Still, he was quite close kin. Perhaps he was a first cousin to Elimelech, his father or mother being sibling to one of Elimelech's parents, and thus sharing the same grandparents. The piety of the family is shown not only in the name his parents gave to Elimelech, which, remember, means my God is king, but also in the name Boaz's father, Salmon, see Matthew 1, verse 5, or Salah, see Luke 3, 32, same guy, shortened version of the same name, had given him. By the way, Salmon's wife was Rahab, so he might well have been one of the two spies Joshua had sent out. Boaz means in him, that is, the Lord, is strength, or by his, the Lord's strength. His own piety will become evident in the account. It is also, coincidentally, the name given to one of the great pillars in front of Solomon's temple. See 1 Kings 7.21. The Lutheran Study Bible helpfully notes that the word the ESV renders worthy is more literally a mighty man of valor. The King James Version renders that a mighty man of wealth perhaps influenced by Luther's translation, which just rendered it a wealthy man. Verse 2. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain after him in whose sight I shall find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. Ruth is no slacker. She doesn't want to just live off the charity that Naomi's former neighbors and relatives might show her. She wants to work to provide for both her mother-in-law and herself. The same spirit that prompted St. Paul to insist in 2 Thessalonians 3.10, for even when we were with you, we would give you this command, if anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. Well, that was clearly at work in Ruth's heart. She was able-bodied. She could go to work for her daily bread and for that of her mother-in-law. And since it was harvest time, she figured she might at least be able to go glean in the fields. Gleaning means just picking up the leftovers. As the workers gathered the stalks into sheaves, there would inevitably be some waste. She perhaps had learned from her husband and from Naomi herself that Yahweh had commanded in Leviticus 19, When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge. Neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest, and you shall not strip your vineyard bare. Neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. Or again in Leviticus 23, verse 22, And when you reap the harvest of your land, You shall not reap your field right up to its edge, nor shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. Well, Ruth was both poor and a sojourner. She figured that the people of the God of Israel would not begrudge her this right of the poor to the leftovers. Verse 3. So she set out and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the clan of Elimelech. She happened, as if by chance, but it was clearly the hand of the Lord at work again. 
She had started out in the part of the field that was owned by others, but at last landed by God's providence in the part of the field that was owned by godly Boaz, and so who had an obligation to provide for his near kin. As Paul would write much later, 1 Timothy 5, 8, but if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Well, Boaz is no unbeliever as we'll see next. Verse 4. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem, and he said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered, The Lord bless you. Bethlehem mentioned by name again. Where else would he be coming from? But the Spirit is rubbing our noses in the fact so that we do not overlook it. These are the very people from whom our Lord Jesus will descend. As Boaz comes out from the village and heads into the fields, he doesn't crack the whip and yell at his reapers. No, instead, this pious man speaks the salutation to them. The Lord be with you. Yes, exactly the same as when in the liturgy the pastor turns to the people before the collect, the prayer of the day, and in the preface of the communion liturgy. In the Latin Vulgate of St. Jerome, It's quite literally the same as in the old Latin mass, Dominus Vobiscum. He thus speaks a blessing on them and reminds them of him who is the giver of all food and of every blessing. The piety of the people also shows in the answer they send back to the man, the Lord bless you. Not quite the usual answer of, and with your spirit, but the thought is actually very much the same. Yahweh is with his people. They live as his guests throughout the days of their earthly pilgrimage, and they pray his presence and blessing upon one another. How much more beautiful and meaningful this exchange is than when we casually say, Hey, hello, how you doing? How much more fitting? The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. Verse 5. Then Boaz said to his young man who was in charge of the reapers, Whose young woman is this? Boaz sees Ruth working in the field, and he's puzzled. Not who is she, but whose is she? Who does she connect to? What's her family? Who are her people? He wasn't so much asking for her name as for her story, her identity, which is never in solitude, but always established in relationship to others. Verse 6. And the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered, She is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. The servant in charge has the scoop on her, which I think suggests that Ruth had asked him if it would be okay for her to glean in his field, gathering up the gleanings. He might have asked her, Okay, but who are you and where do you come from? Probably she looked and dressed slightly different and almost certainly didn't sound like a native Israelite since she'd have learned the Hebrew language as an adult. She told him, and then he likely thought, Ah, of course, my wife or my mother heard all about that yesterday. So he consented, knowing the godly nature of his employer Boaz and the law that had demanded such a right for the poor. Verse 7. She said, Please let me glean and gather among the sheaves after the reapers. So she came, and she has continued from early morning until now, except for a short rest. He testifies not only to her polite request to glean among the sheaves after the reapers, but he tells Boaz something he noticed about the young lady. She was industrious. She didn't just do this job half-heartedly. She arrived early in the morning, and she's kept at her work without ceasing, save for that short rest. That clearly impressed the man in charge, and it also would have made an impression on Boaz himself. And that's where we're going to stop for today. Next up, Boaz goes out to Ruth in the field and speaks kindly to her. He tells her to keep close to his young women and to stay in his part of the field, He promises her that he's commanded his young men not to touch her, even though she was a foreigner. Further, 
he told her to help herself to their water whenever she was thirsty. Ruth is blown away by this kindness shown to a foreigner, but Boaz lets her know that he's heard all about what she's done for her mother-in-law since the death of her husband and how she left her own people and made Israel her home. He prays a blessing on her. The Lord repay you for all that you have done. She's humbled by this graciousness on his part. Till next time, people loved by God, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thanks for listening to The Word of the Lord Endures Forever with Pastor Will Whedon. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a listener-supported program. You can donate by check. Make your check payable to The Word Endures and send it to Box 616, Collinsville, Illinois, 62234. You can also make a secure online contribution at thewordendures.org. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a production of LPR, Lutheran Public Radio.